I am Mimosini. You found a niche of my vast domain. So I'm going to introduce the next issue, which is going to focus on sleep and dreams. So I've been studying sleep for about 15 years. Um, even though it's not been my primary uh, research focus, it has been my obsession. So the second issue is focused entirely on sleep. And we're going to have a presentation right now by somebody who has a very special sort of dreaming that some of you may have heard of. It's called lucid dreaming. I'm dreaming that I'm frazzled, distraught, and late from an important meeting at work. As I worry about losing my job, I glance at my watch and notice that most of the digits are letters. I assume my watch is broken, and I try to think of how to explain why I'm late to my boss. Suddenly, I remember that a malfunctioning digital clock usually means that I'm dreaming. So I think to myself, wouldn't it be great if this is just a dream and I'm not actually about to get fired? Instantly, I am lucid and euphoric, marveling at how similar the dream scene is to my real-life workplace. I exclaim to my dream characters, I'm dreaming, as if expecting them to congratulate me. A couple of them start to sneer and, if I'm not mistaken, tease me by jokingly singing the lyrics to I Believe I Can Fly from the Bugs Bunny and Michael Jordan movie Space Jam. I can fly, I hoot with my hands on my hips, overcoming my usual tendency to worry that I'm being boastful or offensive. To mock and demonstrate my ability to my snide dream characters, I begin to sing the chorus of the song myself as I soar around the building with remarkable control, agility, and ease, especially compared to some of my other recent attempts to fly while lucid. What strikes me most at the moment, though, is the quality of my voice. It's illustrious. My voice echoes a beautiful feedback off the hallway walls, like some sort of majestic sonar. I'm amazed by how my power, range, and vibrato far surpass my normal waking abilities. Moreover, the fluidity, pitch, and volume of my singing are undisturbed by my complicated maneuvers and fluctuating momentum as I soar through the air. Like my flying, my vocals are completely subject to my will. Thank you, Kristen. So let me get you. To, you are now up on the big screen. So I'd like to welcome Kristen Lamarca. Uh, she's here to tell you everything you'd want to know about lucid dreaming. Uh, I'll ask her a few questions to get started, and then I'll uh, let you guys ask some. So Kristen, uh, could you tell us what is the difference between a regular dream and a lucid dream? Uh, I sure can. I just want to point out, though, that I'm ups upset I'm the only one in my pajamas, though. It seems like no one else is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, the difference between lucid and non-lucid dreams, um, really there's one basic difference, and that is whether or not you know that you're dreaming. So in non-lucid dreams, well, regular dreams, we typically don't know that we're dreaming. We're unaware of that fact. We tend to mistake our dreams for reality, and we think that whatever is happening in our dreams is really happening to us. So these sort of belief systems really restrict the choices we make in our dreams and the actions we take. And you mostly have to go along with whatever the dream presents to you. But in a lucid dream, you understand that you're dreaming. You realize it while you're there. And you may even be able to say out loud, this is a dream right now. So this is the most basic difference, just knowing that you're dreaming. But from there, the quality can vary a lot. Um, and that tends to depend on the dreamer's skill level and their ability to reason based on this understanding that they're in a dream. So, for instance, uh, once lucid, you might deduce that there's no social consequences to your actions or physical limitations, such as gravity or muscular fatigue. And if you understand that you're in a dream, then a wider array of choices and options become available to you. 
And this sort of freedom really allows you to make more intentional choices and create a much more favorable dream experience because you're freed from those waking belief systems that typically would restrict what you do. That's another reason why lucid dreams tend to have much more positive emotions um, because you're more free to just do whatever is your heart's desire. There are, I'd say there are plenty other differences and advantages to lucid dreaming above and beyond typical dream work. Um, I probably don't have much time to get into them right now, but maybe a few examples might be that if you're lucid, you can interpret your dreams in real time rather than after you wake up when the memories are gone. Uh, you can practice facing your fears with the understanding that you can't be physically hurt or there won't be any social consequences. Um, and so I'll, I'll digress, but I will just say that much more than non-lucid dreams, if you develop a steady lucid dream practice, lucidity can really, it won't just change your dreams, but it has the potential to change your waking life and how you live. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, does anybody sure. have any questions for Hi, Ian. Has that uh, dream catcher in the background been uh, retrofitted for lucidity? <laughs> no, it hasn't. It's, it was just a gift. Uh, thanks for what you've told us so far. Could you give an example of how uh, lucid dreaming has made a change in your waking life? I can. Um, I can give a very powerful example. Um, so over the last year, I had been struggling to quit smoking cigarettes. And um, this, this happened the day after one of my close friends died, but I became lucid in a dream. And I, I was actually, it was a, a false awakening. In lucid dreams, we tend to dream that we wake up, but we're actually still in a dream. So I was in my bed. And I realized, oh, I'm still dreaming. And so I had this goal to heal my heart and lungs, um, thinking maybe something would click in my subconscious and it might be easier for me to quit. I wasn't really expecting that much, to be honest. But um, what I did in that dream was I placed my hands over my heart and my chest, and I just began to try to project some loving, healing thoughts in that area. And what happened was this very strong feeling of sadness started to arise in my chest and really overwhelm me so much that I began sobbing and shaking uncontrollably. And, um, you know, I, I kind of battled with this emotion for a little while, and then I, I gave up, and I, I, I got out of my bed and probably flew around and did some other fun stuff. But um, this is a very concrete example, but... You know, one or two days later, I came down with bronchitis, and it persisted until I quit smoking. And I really wanted to chalk it up to coincidence that that happened, but it almost felt like I would be dishonoring my dream and my friend that had died. So I think that it really influenced my decision and my persistence in trying to quit. And it's been uh, maybe five, six months now. So I know that's a really powerful example, but um, it was something that was really meaningful to me. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, just really quick, could you give people a little bit of advice on how to train yourself in lucid dreaming or how to increase the chance that you'll have lucid dreams? Sure. Um, there's countless induction strategies out there. Some are more advanced than others, and then there's some that are just really basic, but they're powerful and they work. But uh, before you even attempt to lucid dream, it's really important that you have good dream recall, which is usually done by keeping a dream journal. Because think about it, if you don't remember your dreams, you can have a lucid dream and then you just you won't even remember it later. Also, Dream journaling does something really important for lucid dreaming because it helps you get familiar with what your dreams are like. And if you're familiar with what your dreams are like, that will increase your chances of recognizing that you're dreaming when you're there. So writing your dreams and recalling them is really the foundation of lucid dreaming. 
Uh, but another basic and important skill is creating a habit of just seriously questioning throughout the day, am I dreaming? Is this a dream right now? That and seems how like do you a good know? practice in general for all yeah. of us to question reality on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And even with that question, how do you know if you're awake or not? Because dreams appear real. Things feel solid. They feel real. It's easy to be fooled. And so practice being critical of the state you're in and really questioning. And if you do this enough, that behavior might carry over into your dreams and you'll find yourself asking the same thing, am I dreaming right now? You know, I, I'd say that sometimes just asking isn't enough, uh, especially for beginners, because in, in, in the REM state, your frontal lobe is shut down, it's hard to think clearly. We tend to make up reasons to explain the bizarre circumstances of our dreams. So it's easy, it's really easy to be fooled. But uh, luckily there's a few tests out there, they're called reality tests, and they're ways to test whether or not you're dreaming. The one that works best is to look twice at small printed material, which tends to be really unstable in dreams. So you would just read a sentence in a book or on a street sign, you'd look away and then you'd read it again. And if you're dreaming, the words will change. The sentence won't make sense. The words might be floating all over the page. So that's a really good indicator that you're dreaming. And similarly, uh, digital clocks or watches uh, do the same thing. They're very unstable. So if you look at a watch, you look away, and you look back at it, um, very often it'll change if you're dreaming or it won't make sense. Or the time will say 82.33. So that'll be a good indicator that you're dreaming. And so if you do this several times a day, it'll probably carry over into your dreams and you'll do the same thing uh, in your dreams and you'll find yourself lucid. Thanks so much, Kristen. Um, so we're going to move on now. I can, I'll leave it connected and point the camera at the um, speaker. So if you want to stay on and watch, you're welcome to. Uh, you, you'll be off screen. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Thanks so much, Kristen. Thank you. Bye.